All right, so Acts 4, verses 24 through 31. So prayer, prayer is, was very important to the early church, as you can see in the beginnings of the early church here in Acts. And also prayer should continue to be important for us as a, a church today. Prayer is important as individuals, and prayer is also important as being corporate prayer. So praying together as a church, basically what we've been doing on Wednesday nights, what we do on Sunday mornings as well. And so the kind of to set the what's going on here in Acts chapter 4, Peter and John had recently been arrested after they had healed a man in the temple. And if you remember, they had been told that they, they shouldn't preach the name of Jesus anymore. And what did they say? Well, you know, you might say that, but what God says, how can we not of what we've seen, what we've heard, what we have experienced? So here in Acts 4, 24 through 31, we find them coming back to the other disciples, some other believers, and they prayed. They prayed about the situation they were facing that they knew was really going to not really get better before it was going to get worse, the persecution. So Acts 4, 24 through 31. So when they heard that, they raised their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, you are God who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, who by the mouth of your servant David have said, why did the nations rage and the people plot vain things? The kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. The opening of this prayer Reminds me of the Lord's Prayer, the model that Jesus gave to his disciples. Do you remember how it opens up? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. It's starting off really naming God, calling on a specific God too. You'll meet many people in life that say they believe in God, but you should go further than that and say, who is this God that you believe in? Because there's a lot of different religions in the world, but do they believe in the triune God that has been revealed in Scripture? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. A very specific God, not just any God. Who is this God that the disciples point out? Look at verse uh, 24 again. So when they, they raised their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, you are God who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them. If you know anything about pagan religions, often they would take things in nature and make a different God for them. The sun, the moon, and the water, the land, and different things like that. So this specification here was, you are the creator. You have made everything, and you have made everything in it. And you know, when we pray to God as creator, when we name his name, you realize you're praying to someone who can do something. He is able. He spoke everything into existence with a word. This is the God that we pray to. And they came together, it says, in one accord. That is corporate prayer. That is basically the body of believers gathering together and in one accord, in one purpose together. And we see in the Gospels that Jesus had criticized the Jewish leaders for their long, repetitious public prayers that they would often do. Because they wanted to be heard. They wanted to be seen by their mighty words, maybe by their eloquent speaking. And then he said that we should get into a private room and that we should pray in secret to he who rewards in secret. So when you think about that, it may seem contrary to what's going on with corporate prayer. I, was, I have been thinking about this a lot lately. So when you gather together as a church body and pray, isn't that contrary to getting into your closet and having private prayer? But what Jesus was really pointing out was the heart of prayer. The, the issue was not how they were praying, but the purpose of their prayer. So it wasn't the fact that it was out loud. And, you know, they, they were doing repetitious. Again, they were just wanting people to look at them and what they were doing. But there's not one way to pray. 
There's not just one time to pray. There's not one place to pray. We can pray anywhere and in many different ways. And we do see in the scripture that corporate prayer was happening. The church was gathering together in one accord. So they were. what we really should look at with the heart of prayer is that we're addressing God, not others. That's what prayer is, to God, not others. So corporate prayer, you look in Acts, you see a lot of it. At Pentecost, they prayed and the Holy Spirit came, fell upon the people, and many people were converted. So they had come together in one accord with the corporate prayer. When they chose um, Matthias, the disciple to place Judas, they came together in corporate prayer and prayed together. And we see in James, he says that if someone is sick in your church, to call the elders together and let them pray over those who are sick and they will be healed. So we see corporate prayer happening throughout Scripture. And you probably have heard before, and usually this comes when you only have a small people, a small amount of people in your group. When two or three are gathered in his name, he's in your midst. You've heard that before, right? Do you know that's not really talking about prayer? Too often we hear these verses kind of just thrown out in that way, but we don't look at the context of what it is. That verse is actually talking about church discipline. The fact that you have something going on between a brother and sister and you address it in a one-on-one. And then you dress it as two, and then you dress it as the body. And then the body comes together and agrees with what that person is either doing or not doing, right? So it's when two or three have gathered in my name. So what we are basically binding together on earth or loosing together on earth is what's happening. So that's not talking about prayer at all. That is just talking about church discipline. And another thing that I've always thought strange when people would give that verse is the fact that we know God's always with us. We don't have to have two people together to have God with us. He is always dwelling within every Christian, the Holy Spirit. So we uh, gather together, corporate prayer, in one accord. And that one accord is really looking at God's agenda together and agreeing with God's agenda together. Not only is it looking at it and agreeing with God's agenda, it's also adjusting to God's agenda. What God desires of us. Many times you might hear someone say, and maybe you even said it yourself, I don't know what God wants me to do. You feel like that sometimes in prayer. I don't know what God wants me to do. Well, here's a big question. So if we're praying for God's will in our lives, and that's what we should be doing, praying for God's will in the lives of our brothers and sisters in Christ, have you read God's word? Because there is his will very clearly laid out. Very clearly. So we have his revealed will in scripture. So when we're praying, we need to be in God's word. To make sure that we are adjusting to his agenda, adjusting to what his will is. Now, it is true that there is some things as a hidden will. There are some things in life we don't know the answers to. And God has given us all things for life and godliness in scripture. So, But there are things we don't understand. Things we don't know. But we can still pray to God and always seeking his will. And his will is revealed through his word. But his will is also revealed through his people. Through the body together. And you see the importance of corporate prayer there. When we come in together in one accord, it's amazing the wisdom when you put all the people of the church together. We've been through things together, haven't we? We've been through things on our own. There are challenges that we have gotten through. We've seen God bring us through those things. And we're able to walk alongside each other. So coming together in one accord is a wonderful thing. And God reveals his will sometimes in situations. You know, when he closes one door, there's another door that's going to open up on the other side. I think I've shared in the, the church before, before I came to Little Stevens Creek, I had applied for a lot of churches since God had called me to ministry. I did not apply for Little Stevens Creek. God just works in mysterious ways and in his timing. And, you know, there were plenty of churches in Greer. And there was a church I was actually preaching in that didn't have a, a, a pastor at the time whenever I got the call from, from our church. And when we heard that call, we just we knew God's will. You know, he closed one door and opens another door. And at that point, we really were like Peter. We knew we had to get out of the boat and walk. And he was looking at Jesus. It maybe wasn't the way that we thought we were going to go. But you look at God's will. You see his people. You see when he, people that he brings into your life, the situations he brings in your life. And I can tell you what, there's so much more wisdom when you bring others along with you on that journey. When you seek wise counsel from each other and we come together in one accord and we pray. And I love this example too. If you look at verse 25, when they prayed, they prayed scripture. They were looking to scripture. 
who by the mouth of your servant David have said. So this is from the Old Testament. Why did the nations rage and the people plot vain things? The kings of the earth took their stand. The rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ, against his chosen one. So they prayed scripture. God, this is what you said. That's what happens when we pray scripture. We say, God, this is what you said. Where do I go with this? This is what you said. This is how I face this situation. We talk about the whole armor of God. The sword of the spirit is the word of God, right? Well, it's too bad that often we walk out in the world with one sword and not a bunch of swords. Because we walk out maybe with John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Wonderful verse. Wonderful purpose with that sword. But that's not going to address everything in life, is it? It is not the fullness of all of scripture together. That's why we need to know God's word. That's why we need to memorize God's word so we have that weapon ready when these attacks come. We have these weapons ready when we gather together in one accord. What God is speaking to you through his revealed will. And as they prayed this Old Testament scripture, they acknowledged his sovereignty, the fact that God was in control. So in the Old Testament, he said, the nations are going to rage. The people are going to plot vain things. The kings in the earth are going to take the stand. Remember, Peter and John had just been told, you will not be preaching about Jesus anymore. <laughs> they didn't listen to that, obviously. But they were thinking back to the Old Testament, what God had revealed in his revealed will, that this was going to happen in his sovereign will. And it was happening right then. And they understood their situation because of that. So this is the situation. When you pray together corporate prayer, when you're looking at God's word, his agenda is revealed. The situation is revealed. His revealed will. Now the next question is, what do I need? What do I need to face this situation? What did they pray for? Did they pray they just removed all those barriers from their life? Sometimes we may pray for that, but it's going to be pretty obvious when God doesn't remove those barriers. Remember when Paul prayed for the thorn in the flesh, whatever that might have been. He prayed three times for it to be removed, and it didn't get removed. That didn't mean that God wasn't hearing his prayer, that God wasn't responding. But God had a purpose in that thorn in the flesh for him. Perhaps it was to humble Paul. God had a purpose for what was happening in the church and this persecution. Did it stop the spread of the church? No. No, the church blew up, went across the world because of what was happening right here in the beginning, here in Jerusalem. So what do I need to do? And when they prayed, they really prayed a very specific request. Verse 29. Now, Lord, look on their threats. So look on what's happening. I see your revealed will here. And grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. They requested a specific need. We don't need to pray vague things. When we pray to God, let's pray specific. Let's pray about what's on our hearts. God already knows what's on our heart. Even if it is a time of lament, whatever it is we're crying out to God, he knows and he wants to hear. Let's cry out very specifically. And what did they need? They looked at their situation. They looked at what God had revealed to them. They need to be spiritually empowered for the opposition that was there. That situation they were going to face. They didn't say remove that. They said we need boldness. They prayed for boldness. No doubt, that's what we live in right now in our culture in America. We need boldness to face the things that we face because Christianity is more and more becoming the minority, becoming opposite of the general public, opposite of their agenda. And we understand that. You know, it shouldn't surprise us as Christians, but we need to pray for boldness. We need to look at the situation and see what God says about that. So they pray for boldness to speak. They prayed that God's work would be done, that his work would be established, that his work would be confirmed. How was it confirmed? Through healings, through signs and wonders, the mighty things that the apostles did through the name of Jesus. They prayed in the name of Jesus. Look at that at the end of verse 30. Through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. When we pray, look at God's name. It reveals things about his attributes, about who he is. Who is God's servant? Jesus. He is God in the flesh. He is God's, the Father's perfect representation. That is who Jesus is. We pray to God. We pray in the name of Jesus that things would be done. And what happened? They prayed for boldness. I don't know what we would do right now if verse 31 happened in here right now. 
And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. God answered in a miraculous way. God moved. God showed up. And God empowered them as they came together in one accord. It is important for us to have corporate prayer together. Call on the specific name of God, not just a God. It is God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He has revealed Himself in His Word. Let's seek His will, His will in His Word, and adjust to His agenda. Adjust to what He wants for our life. Survey the situation. What is going on in your life? How does it translate looking at it through Scripture? How does it translate looking at it through God's body that is brought together? Again, we have a lot of wisdom together, a lot more than we have on our own. God has brought the body together to reveal His will. So we survey that situation, and then we see what we need, and we ask for what we need, and God will move among His people. So each Wednesday night, we're going to start looking at just what Scripture reveals about prayer in just different ways. I had kind of charted out some of this, and there's just really a lot about prayer just in the New Testament they come from very different angles. I think prayer is something that we all struggle with in some, some way, sometimes. But how do we pray? Father, I thank you for your love for us. I thank you for calling us as your people. I thank you for allowing us to gather together as your people and that we can come together in one accord to pray in your will for your agenda, Lord, and adjusting to your agenda, adjusting to what you have called us to. Now, Lord, look on the threats of the world and grant to your servants that we have all boldness, that we may speak your word, and that you would work healings, signs and wonders among your people, all through the name of your precious Son, and that we would just be bold in all that we do, Lord. And whatever it is that we're carrying with us tonight, that you would help us just to release that to you, Lord. That you'd help us to continue to walk with each other and love each other to know each other better, and just be willing to be humbled, Lord, by you, by whatever it is that you're trying to shape us. Help us to know your word that we would be equipped for the battle and guide us into all truth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.